What happens in wetlands is they go through a natural cycle where they break down and the phosphorus is, is actually is stored in the sediment. That's how phosphorus sort of cycles through a wetland. It, it goes through a biological you know, sort of system and it eventually ends up in the sediment where it's permanently stored. What can happen in a wetland is that the phosphorus levels can become actually saturated with the sediments and the wetland can actually release phosphorus. We don't know if Netley is doing that or not, but we want to really understand the nutrient cycling within that marsh system. So what my project is looking at is, is how cattails, this uh, large emergent here, you see it in all kinds of wetlands and the ditches around the Winnipe Winnipeg, around the city. What, this, what cattail does is it, it incorporates a lot of this phosphorus, a lot of the nutrients, it sucks it out of the sediments into its uh, plant material. So all these leaves that you see here are, are loaded with nutrients and particularly we're interested in phosphorus. So we're taking this cattail and we're grinding it up and analyzing it and seeing how much phosphorus it actually contains. And uh, what we've found is that it can contain from about 20 kilograms of phosphorus up to about 60 kilograms of phosphorus for every hectare of cattail out there. So when you look at a, a big field of cattail out there, you can imagine all the phosphorus that's loaded within there. And so we've been harvesting this stuff. You can get, a, you can get a yield of about 19 tons of cattail per hectare. One of the really interesting and really applied things of this project are these, these pellets here. These are typical pellets. They look like sort of rabbit food, alfalfa pellets. These pellets have the same calorific or heat value, heating value, as uh, wood pellets do. So you can take these pellets and stick them in your standard wood pellet that people have in warehouses and their workshops and their barns these little uh, metal wood stoves and you can burn these pellets and they produce the same heat as uh, a wood pellet does. So these pellets actually not only give you heat, but what you can also get from these is once you burn them, the ash has all the phosphorus locked within it. So essentially the whole cycle of this product, what it's looking at is you're taking the cattail, you're harvesting it, removing it from the wetland, and so you're permanently removing that phosphorus from the wetland. And then you take your cattail, you dry it, you create it into these pellets or into cubes or whatever you want. You burn it within these biomass burners like a pellet stove. You create the heat energy. And then you take the ash and you can recover the phosphorus for it. It's a whole different science of phosphorus recovery to try and get the phosphorus out. But it is a, a, an applied science where you can actually recover that phosphorus. And then another aspect of the project which is really driving the economics are the carbon credits. And so you're burning these, these pellets and then you can take the credit, the carbon credits, and sell them to a company which is producing a lot of CO2 and actually gain these carbon credits. And so this whole cycle is you're essentially doing it for energy, carbon credits, and you get this added benefit of nutrient removal. The other positive aspect, of course, is if you're restoring wetlands, say Netley Lebo Marsh, if you're restoring these wetlands, or you're building these uh, stormwater treatment wetlands like they have in Florida for treating natural runoff water, you create these, these uh, marsh habitats and you're also creating a wildlife habitat and so you find ducks and blackbirds and frogs and fish everything what, when you're improving and creating habitat you're creating wildlife habitat and then you can use these areas for capturing nutrients that would otherwise enter Lake Winnipeg and increase of course the phosphorus within the lake which is not really a good thing.